Tonight we get to gather together to celebrate the goodness that Jesus our Savior has been born to bring forgiveness of sins and redemption and eternal life to all who believe in him. And so as we celebrate that good news of Jesus, I invite you to stand for our opening hymn number 379. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Tonight, remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus, a Savior born to forgive our sins because we are in need of forgiveness. Therefore, let us come before our loving Savior, asking for the forgiveness that he offers to each of us. Light of the world, we confess that we have lived in the darkness of our sins. Prince of Peace. We confess that we have caused hurt and pain by our words and actions. Emmanuel, we confess that we have ignored the needs and sufferings of others. Mighty God, grant us the forgiveness that we need through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, who has come to rescue us from our sins. Jesus has come to rescue you from your sins. And because of his death on the cross, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
You may be seated as our preschool director, Ms. Donna, comes forward and invites all the children of the congregation to come forward for the children's message. That's okay. You want to sit right there with me? There's Patrick. Hey there. <laughs> hey there. Levi, looky here. You could sit up there on that one. Oh, but you'll slide off. No, you be really careful. You can do that. Oh, looky here. Oh, what a great group we have. And do you know what? I've been given the privilege to tell you guys a wonderful story tonight. Do you know who it's a story about? Who do you think it's a story about? Jesus. It is a story about Jesus indeed. Do you know what? This story took place a really, really long time ago. In a faraway land, there was a special lady. And do you know what her name was? Mary, it was. Have you heard this story before? I am so glad. Her name was Mary. And one day, an angel came to Mary. And you know what? You, tell me your name, Sweet Pea. What's your name? Elena? Well, I love that name. Can I borrow that mic? Thank you. I'm going to turn this mic on. And Elena, I want you to come up here. Will you come with me? Just stand right beside me a minute. You are right. That lady's name was Mary. And an angel came to that lady. And that angel told that lady something special. Do you know what she told her? She told her she was going to have a what? A baby. A baby. And what was that baby's name going to be? Jesus. Oh, yes. You can sit back down. Thank you, Elena. That is exactly it. She told her she was going to have a baby. And that baby's name would be Jesus. Well, there was a man. And do you know what that man's name was? Who knows? Come on up here, Isaiah. It's your turn. It was Joseph. And do you know what? That angel came to Joseph, too. And he told Joseph what? They were going to have a baby. They were going to have a baby. But do you know what? There was also a king. And do you know what that king told everyone in the land? He told them to go get counted. Yeah, go ahead, you can sit down. Patrick, do you remember what the king said? Come here, and I'm going to help you. Come here. The king told everyone to go get counted in their father's land because, guess what? They had to go to the land of their fathers to be counted so they would know how many people there were. Have you ever had to walk to go get counted? No, you haven't. I'm so glad. So they went, and they went to a land called Bethlehem. And they had to go to Bethlehem so they could be counted. When they got to Bethlehem, I've got to come over here and get something. Laura, I'm going to let you help me here, would you? There's a baggie in there with a wood thing in it. Oh, looky here. Abel, do you want to help me? When, here, you take this. Take that for me. When they got to Bethlehem, they knocked on the door at the inn. Can you knock on it? That's it. And the innkeeper came in. They said, what do you want? You keep it. You're going to need it again. And Joseph said, we need a room. Mary's going to have a baby. And they said, no room. So Joseph knocked on another door. Can you knock? Yes. And the innkeeper came, and what did he say? What do you want? And he said, what do you want? Yes. And what did Joseph say? He said, what do you want? No, Joseph said, I need a room. I need a room. Yeah, because why? Mary's going to what? Mary's going to have a baby soon. 
that is right. But the innkeeper said, no room. That's right. So he knocked on another door. Oh, perfect. Now we'll give these back to your mom. He knocked on, and the innkeepers came and said, what did he say? He said, what do you want? And Joseph, whoa, said, good catch. <laughs> Joseph said, I need a room. Mary's going to have a baby. Mary's going to have No, not Joseph. Mary's going to have the baby. That's right. And so the innkeeper said, I have no room, but you can stay in my stable if you want. So they went to the stable. And do you know what? That night, I'm not sure if that, I think that was on. You know, I think you're going to need that in a minute. That night, while everyone slept, oh, in that bag. Mary had her baby. Oh, looky there. It's the baby. <laughs> it's the baby Jesus. Looky here. It's the baby Jesus. Josie, come here. Will you take the baby and wrap it up and put it up in the manger for me? Oh, thank you. That night, while the whole world slept, Mary had her baby, wrapped him in a swaddling cloth, and laid him in the manger. Right. And do you know what else? There were some shepherds in a field. Do you know what a shepherd is, Patrick? Someone that takes care of sheep. Absolutely. That is what a shepherd is. They stay with their sheep all the time. Well, while the shepherds were watching the sheep, somebody came to talk to them. Do you know who it was? Who was it? It was Gabriel, the angel. And what did the angel say to that Shepherd, do you know? There is a king. The baby was born. And do you know where that baby is? That baby is in a manger, in a stable, in Bethlehem. And then suddenly the sky was filled with angels. Can you guys all stand up and put your arms up? And let's sing the Gloria. Make your mouth like an O. And we're going to sing the Gloria. And then the shepherd, you know what the shepherds said to each other, Patrick? They said, let's all go sit around the baby and see the baby. Can you guys go sit around the baby, Jesus? 
Go sit around. Go, can you go sit by the baby? Yeah. Oh, looky there. There's the baby. And then they welcomed the baby. Can you guys welcome the baby with me? Do you remember the chant we did in preschool when we went, watch me, and that'll help you. Holy babe, holy babe, lying in a manger. Holy babe, holy babe. Now go like this, put your arms out. Welcome, little stranger. Can you do it one more time and do it with me? Holy babe, holy babe, lying in a manger. Holy babe, holy babe, welcome, little stranger. Now, we have somebody coming up. Would you three come up? Guess who these are? These are the three kings. And they were led by a star, a star high in the sky, right above that stable. And they were coming to see that baby also. Come on up, my three kings. One of the kings brought gold to the baby Jesus. One brought myrrh to the baby Jesus. And the other brought frankincense. And they welcomed the baby just like we did. And do you know what? That's what we're here for tonight. We're here to welcome the baby Jesus. And Maxwell, there is not a better story, is there? No. Can you say, welcome, baby Jesus? Oh, thank you, guys. And thank you for coming up and helping me tell the story. You guys can go back to your seat now if you like.
Our first scripture reading this evening is from Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the lineage and line of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. We continue our worship by joining together and singing hymn number 370. Second reading is from Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. This is the word of the Lord.
Our third reading is from 1 John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things that our joy may be complete. This is the word of the Lord. We continue our worship by joining together and singing hymn number 383. Well, Merry Christmas to all of you. I'm glad that you are here as we gather to hear God's word and to learn from him what he has for us this evening. We go to him in prayer. Our first prayer is for our own hearts and minds that the Holy Spirit would bring them peace and comfort from the hearing of God's word this evening. Our second prayer is for our brothers and sisters that the Holy Spirit would speak to them, uplift them, and encourage them through the hearing of the gospel. And finally, I ask that you pray for me that I would preach faithfully and truthfully the word of God and proclaim for all to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Psalm 19 says, may the words of mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but my family is filled with traditions around the holidays. Some of them are really, really great. Some of them are really, really terrible. Any of you got those? Anybody want to admit with your families around you that some of your traditions are really good and the others are, you wish they didn't exist? Well, one of the traditions that my family has that I absolutely love is gift giving. I love giving gifts. I can't wait. Um, my wife already has all of her Christmas presents before today because I couldn't wait. And I was just like, here you go, open them. I want to see you enjoy what I have gotten you, all right? And I do this every year. She's never opened a present on Christmas Day from me ever in our history of being together. But I also love receiving presents. And it's partly because I grew up in a a huge family with lots of aunts and uncles and lots of cousins where giving presents took about two hours to get through on Christmas Day. And eventually that got to be kind of annoying for some people. I don't, I don't know why. I always thought it was awesome. So they eventually decided that our family is so big, we're going to start drawing names to kind of ease the burden of buying so many gifts. And so you would have to draw names 
And then it got to be a competition, because my family, if you don't know my family well enough, uh, we turn everything into a competition. You can win the drawing of the name at Christmas time in my family. You can win the gift giving, okay? <laughs> and so this turned into a competition, and it got a little heated because you didn't, well, I don't want this person, I want this person, right? We love each other, but we're weird, okay? And so one year, though, my grandmother, in the midst of this tradition, which is good, it's fine, we all get to divvy up who we give gifts to each year, decided one year, we're going to do homemade gifts. Now, my grandmother thought this was a great idea because she's incredibly talented, and she was amazing at making all kinds of beautiful jewelry and decorations and all kinds of wonderful things that people in my family still wear, even though she's passed on. The rest of us, not so much. We, we are much better at going to Amazon or Target and getting you something than creating it from scratch like my grandmother wanted. And so this was a one-time tradition for our family because it was the worst Christmas ever. No, by the time everybody was getting their turn, it was just like everybody was just nervous about what they were going to open. And that's the way life is. Some traditions around Christmas time are really, really great, right? You keep doing them over and over and over again. And how many of you have ever had some kind of Christmas thing where you tried it and you're like, you know what? We're not doing that next year. Anybody ever done that, right? You're just like, we're giving up on that tradition. It was a one-time deal. Now, as nice as traditions are, as nice as gift giving in my family is, it's fun and all the drawing the names and all the, everything that went with that, whatever it might be for you, here's what is real. That's not the point of Christmas. Traditions are beautiful. The singing of the songs, getting together with family, gift giving, all this stuff is wonderful and beautiful and fun, but it's not the point of Christmas. And if you do make it the point of Christmas, you'll miss out on what is real hope and real joy. In this story, we learn uh, three things that teach us about what is the meaning of Christmas. And the first is this, is that God is with us, really. In Luke chapter two, verse seven, she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Now, Ms. Donna did a great job of teaching that to the children and the children's message, and some of them knew the answer. And many of you already know that verse and that part of the story, and it becomes part of the traditions, right? It's just a nice story, sometimes we think. It's just a pleasant idea. It's, it's nice and warm when it comes on in Charlie Brown Christmas story, all right? But it's more than that. The reality to, for you and I to actually have hope and peace and joy this Christmas and when Christmas is over is when we actually realize that Jesus really is God with us, that he really is God on high coming down into a manger and a stable trough filled with animals and feces and all kinds of other gross stuff and say, here I am to be with you. And here's why this matters so much. It's not just a nice idea that God is with us. It means he understands what it's like to be human. He understands what it's like when you cry. He understands what it's like when you have fear and worry and anxiety and stress. Hebrews says he was tempted in every way that we are except without sin, meaning he understands everything that we face in life, all the hardships. God becoming flesh and being born into a manger is him saying, I know what it feels like. And that should be incredibly comforting for us because he went through it all and he experienced it all. Everything that we have as human beings, he understands and feels. The other thing that it teaches us is how much he actually loves you. Look how far he's willing to go for you. He is God in heaven in perfection in all eternity past, and it's amazing, and it's beautiful, and it's wonderful, and there's nothing wrong with it. How many of you, that's your life? It's beautiful, amazing, and there's nothing wrong with it, all right? Or it's a big mess sometimes with a lot of heartache and a lot of pain and a lot of sorrow and grief. And God says, I'm going to give all of that up and be born to a manger for you, right? Christmas is not just a neat idea, but it's a reality of God showing you and me, here's how much he loves you. Here's how much he cares for you. Here's how far he will go for you. He will give up heaven 
and come down to earth into the mess that we have as human beings and say, I am here for you. The second thing that we learn from this story is that we have the gift of eternal life. The angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. It is good news, that is our word gospel. It is the gospel hope that Jesus has been born. And because of that, you and I actually have real hope. Because if all of our hope for Christmas is just how the holidays feel, just getting together with family, just getting together and sharing presents and meals and making memories, as wonderful as all that is, if that's all of your hope is wrapped up in that, it ends later this week. Unless some of you are wild and crazy, you're like, no, my whole family is staying forever. They're trapped now, all right? I'm assuming you want most of them to go home, all right? You know, they're like, this was a great weekend, bye, all right? <laughs> but if all of our hope is wrapped up in just our traditions and just the nostalgic feeling of what Christmas is, then we don't have any hope at all. It's only gonna last for the season. And what Jesus is offering you is the free gift of grace and the hope of eternal life. This is what the angel means when they say, bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. It is for all of y'all. Whether you've known God forever and you love God and you worship Jesus every single week or whether you are struggling, you're like, I don't really know how I feel about God. I don't know if I care about God. The good news of Christmas is that Jesus is still for you. And the good news and the hope of Christmas is that Jesus is for everybody. And then the angel goes on, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That's the free gift of grace. He's saying, no, the Savior was born for you on your behalf to redeem you and to save you so you don't have to keep killing yourself to earn God's love. You don't have to keep exhausting yourself to prove yourself to other people, to prove yourself to God. No, he's saying, no, the Savior's been born for you, and it's a free gift. You are freely loved by God through Jesus Christ. And then the final thing is that we get to be friends with God. In Luke 2, verse 12, it says, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. The angel says it twice, a sign for you. You will find the Savior wrapped in cloth. He has come down to be a human being with us in the mess and in the midst of life and all the chaos that comes with it. And he says, you get to be friends with me because it is for you. Martin Luther famously said the whole gospel, the whole message of Christianity can be summarized in those two words, for you. This is what Christmas is all about, that Jesus has come to earth so that you and I could have friendship with God and there would be nothing between us anymore. That's why the angels say, fear not, because there's nothing left to fear. Whatever we might think of God or whatever we think he thinks of us, the angels say there's no need for fear anymore because you have friendship with God through Jesus Christ. St. Augustine said it this way in his Christmas sermon. He said, he lies in a manger but he holds the whole world in his hand. He is wrapped in swaddling cloths, but he clothes us with immortality. He finds no room in the inn, but he makes a temple for himself in the hearts of every believer. Dear friends, this is the whole hope and purpose of Christmas, is that Jesus has come to be God with us, really, in everyday life, in every scenario, and he understands what it feels like for us to go through the ups and downs of life. We have the free gift of grace and eternal life. You don't have to prove yourself to God. You don't have to try harder next year. You don't have to lie to me afterwards and say, I'll see you next week. Just take that burden off a lot of you. Because you don't have anything left to prove to God. He's already given you the free gift of grace and love and eternal life through Jesus Christ. And finally, you are friends with God, and he is friends with you, whether you know it or not yet. He has chosen to be friends with you, to come and to love you, and to give you his perfect love, which casts out all fear. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks.
that you have been born to be God with us, to give us the free gift of grace and to show us how far your love goes for us. We thank you for the gift of your friendship and the joy that it brings. In your name we pray, amen. This time we continue our worship by presenting our tithes and offerings to the Lord. This time in the service, we're going to have the lighting of the candles, which is a symbol of Jesus being the light of the world, coming into the darkness of our lives and shining his grace and mercy upon it. Um, candles that are lit are going to be going down the inner aisle, and so just tip the unlit candle over to light it and then pass the flame along uh, throughout the aisles, right? So don't burn each other, is what I'm saying.
As you depart this evening, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you in favor and give you his peace. Amen.